I always tell my interns, even if you take it, you go on an internship and you work at it and you learn you don't like it, that's okay. That's what internships are for. Um, you rather learn at an internship where you're not getting paid and you're not tied down um, that you don't like something because then that's an answer for a career. You know, that's an answer like, okay, I'm not going down that path. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in again to a new episode of Their Story, Their Journey. Here from some of my past internship, volunteer, and work bosses, and just hearing their journeys to how they are, got to where they're at. And this next individual is someone that does hold a special place because not only did I intern, I actually shadowed them my senior year of high school for a day. They gave me the very first opportunity to intern in athletics, specifically college athletics. And this person I'm gonna to introduce to you, not only do we share the same first name, but are both our institution colors, are orange and blue, so we're just meant to believe those colors. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Jen Albanese. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for joining. I'm really glad that you're able to make it on during this crazy time of quarantine. Oh, I know, absolutely. Oh, you were so sweet. That was so sweet, everything you said. You were you were one of my favorites. You still are. <laughs> well, thank you, and that means a lot. You have a lot of interns that come through Syracuse. I do, but only a few I remember, and you're, you're definitely one of them, so. <laughs> well, thank you, I appreciate it. Well, I guess we can first start off with just telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so I am the director of marketing at Syracuse University in their athletic department. Um, I've been the director for about a year now, um, but I've been working with Syracuse University Athletics uh, for over 11 years. Gosh, that makes me sound super old. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I've worked with Syracuse pretty much my whole career. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much. I've learned so much. Um, I love working with the people that I do, um, and it's been a great experience for me to be at Syracuse. Um, what else about me? I am soon to be a mother of two. Um, I have a, a son on the way in August. I have an 18-month-old daughter, and um, I'm from Syracuse, so I've, I've lived here my whole life. Went to Lemoyne College. Go Dolphins. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much about me. <laughs> Hopefully that's enough. Yeah, absolutely. And what was your major at LeMoyne? I was um, business administration with a concentration in marketing, and then I did a minor in communications. They didn't have a specific sport management major, um, but I think the marketing was really uh, an, an overall really good experience for me to learn marketing as a general like subject. Um, and the communications piece really helped with, you know, my leadership skills, my communication, my um, and I, I use that every day now, especially as, as the director. So um, I can't say enough about Lemoyne. I had an incredible experience there and um, anything I can do to, to talk good about Lemoyne, I do. They're, they're, it's a fantastic institution, so. Well, that's awesome. Well, I guess that kind of leads into the next question is what kind of sparked your interest to work in athletics? Was it a family member or a friend that influenced you or did you not really know that you wanted to get into the athletics field until you got to college. Yeah, that, I mean, I didn't really, again, when I went to Lemoyne in the beginning, I really had no idea. I think the only thing I ever really thought about was I just didn't want to have your typical nine to five job. I didn't want to go punch a time clock, you know, nine to five, that was it, answer phone, sit at a desk. Um, so I realized that in high school, I loved sports. Um, I played sports, it wasn't great. I didn't think I was not a student athlete in college. Um, but I really loved being a part of sports and being, and so I did some internships, which I think helped me really develop my love for college or just for athletics in general, sports in general, and then especially college athletics, just because, you know, when you work in professional sports, you're working on one sport, that's it. That's all you're doing. You work for a baseball team, it's baseball team your entire year. College athletics gives you a little bit more of flexibility that you got the fall sports you got your footballs and your soccer then you go into the winter and you got your basketballs and your ice hockey and then in the spring you have your softball and your lacrosse um, and your tennis so I, I get to experience a lot of different sports in college athletics and that's what I really learned from my internships that I did um, that kind of grew my love 
for that. And that's kind of what made me decide that that was kind of the path I wanted to go down. Well, that's awesome. And speaking of internships, what kind of internships did you do to gain experience? Yeah, so in Syracuse, we don't have a ton of professional teams. So we have a few minor league teams um, as well as Syracuse University. So my first internship was with our minor league baseball team, which was at the time the Syracuse Chiefs, now they're the Syracuse Mets. Um, and through that internship, and, and baseball was a love of mine from the beginning, and that was what I thought, thought I wanted to go on that path. Um, but working with the team, I loved it. I learned so much in, in any minor league system that you're working, you're doing everything. So I did everything from, you know, working in the merchandise store, uh, doing inventory, doing sales calls. I did customer service. I did, I did, you know, did the promotions on the field. I danced on the dugout and tossed t-shirts. I pulled the tarp, not very well and a short person. So the, the tarp pulling was not great. Um, so in that doing all of those different things, I think again, seeing that I could do a lot of different things and be a part of different things I liked, but I really enjoyed the game atmosphere of entertaining the fans and, and that whole marketing experience. So that helped. Um, from there, I interned with one of our local radio stations and that was more of a sales events type of an internship. And I always tell my interns, even if you take it, you go on an internship and you work at it and you learn, you don't like it. That's okay. That's what internships are for. Um, you rather learn at an internship where you're not getting paid and you're not tied down, um, that you don't like something because then that's an answer for a career. You know, that's an answer like, okay, I'm not going down that path. So um, I loved working at the radio station, but I knew that I didn't want to work in radio and I knew I didn't want to do sales. Um, so, you know, that was okay though. I learned from that. And again, in all of those internships that I did, I made connections and I networked and that's a really big piece of it too. And that kind of took me to the next step. So I met someone at the radio station who connected me with someone um, at Syracuse University. And it was their corporate group, ISP Sports, which is now IMG College, which does all the corporate sponsorships for universities and colleges across the country. And I worked in that division where I got to work games and I got to do sponsorship activation and, and not so much selling. I was more of implementation of that with, as an intern. And that's where I was like, this is, this is my, this is where I want to be. Um, so th those three internships really kind of shaped the path of where I wanted to go. And I was very lucky that my boss at ISP Sports at the time, Dave Maloney, who I'm forever grateful for, um, put in a good word for me when there was a marketing coordinator position available at Syracuse, in Syracuse Athletics um, this, this summer when I was graduating from college. So I was very lucky. I know that that is not a normal path for a lot of people. And there's a lot of people do a lot of 10 month internships and graduate assistantships and lots of other internships to try to get to that full-time job. But I was very lucky that um, you know, there was a position open and um, I had made the right, made the right connections and made the right impressions and, you know, really tried to work as hard as I could. And, and that's where I got my, my start was as the marketing coordinator with Syracuse. So it was great. Well, that's awesome. And I have to say, speaking of connections, because you were the first person or school, I should say, that gave me an opportunity to intern. So looking through my wallet the other day and uh, <laughs> look what I found. Title's oh a little God. different, Look but uh, there's a little marks on it, but I couldn't believe that I Look still have that. this in my wallet. So next time I see you in person, I'll have to get an updated one. Uh, oh, right. With my new name and my new title. And I think I have one of those too, because like when you get your first business card, it's like the coolest thing ever. So I think I have one like in my scrapbook or in my little like my little memory box just so that I have it. And um, it's pretty cool. I'm glad you still have that. That's so cool. Yeah, I will forever keep this too. Though. This can be a part of my journey box. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so speaking of new title, so you did start off as the marketing sponsorship coordinator. And then in August of 2019, you became the director of marketing. Just talk a little bit about that, um, how that process went with how you got promoted and talk about how since your new titles, how your job responsibilities have changed. Yeah. Um, so again, starting at Syracuse, uh, I've from, from then to now, I've gone through 
three different athletic directors. Um, so, you know, every kind of different athletic director of marketing kind of changed a little bit and my, my role changed a little bit. But as I grew in my role, um, and I think they realized whether it was my boss at the time or, you know, an associate AD for external relations or whoever was overseeing marketing at the time, I think they saw that I had been there and that I had had experience. So, you know, every time I would kept getting a little bit more and more, you know, responsibilities and roles and, you know, duties that they would give me. So, um, in August of 19, um, we had some different staff changes, um, and they decided that they were going to split um, a role that someone had taken uh, that had had that was like assistant AD for sales and marketing. And he left and they decided to hire a director of ticket sales and a director of marketing. But they were, we were both there. So um, it was a promotion for both of us and it was great. Um, I think it was for me well deserved after all of the hard work and dedication in the time that I had put in. Um, you know, because a lot of the times I was the one running a lot of stuff when we would go through different transitions when my when a boss would leave or they would get a new job or we would get a new AD. So from the marketing side of things, I, you know, it's my baby. I, I felt like I needed to step up and be the leader. So it was, it was nice to be rewarded for all of those times, um, which was great. Um, but as I got the title, I think a lot of the stuff stayed the same, but now it's more of, um, I oversee all of our staff. I, um, you know, there's, we have what, 18 to 20 sports. I oversee all of those sports and everything that has to do with marketing for them. Now that doesn't mean I do every sport, um, but we assign our roles to our staff and I oversee them to make sure that everything gets done. So the overseeing of the staff part, um, where now they know that I'm in charge, I think it's been nice and they're, I have a fantastic staff. So it's not like I'm a boss and they're like, you know, they listen, you know, to everything I say. I have a fantastic staff. We work very well together as a, as a collaborative team. Um, but so that was new. And then I also do now I do all of our hiring. So I, I handle the whole hiring process for the marketing staff. So whether it's full time, you know, 10 month interns, um, semester long interns, game day interns, I handle all of that. Um, I oversee our budget, which, you know, budget is budget. Um, so that, that's lots of fun. Um, I also oversee, you know, our advertising and um, our, we are transitioning now to have social media under marketing. So I will um, start overseeing our social media staff. Um, again, they, we have a staff that's wonderful, but they will just fall under marketing now and we'll just collaborate more with them as a team. So it's more of the overseeing, I think that has changed. And I think I have enjoyed learning and, and pushing my leadership skills and kind of seeing the best way. Cause obviously each person deals with that differently and how you lead someone in a different way. So that's been a great challenge for me to be able to learn and grow and, and become a better leader, hopefully. So yeah, it's, it's very exciting and very rewarding. So I was really uh, proud of myself. <laughs> Absolutely, and you should. And like I said, you are awesome to intern for under, like truly. And I'm very grateful that you gave me the opportunity. And I'm so glad that people can still continue to get that opportunity through you. So you Absolutely. said that now you are a part of the hiring process. For, so, and what you've seen so far, is there anything that people have put down on their resume or have said in an interview that you were kind of like, ooh, I wouldn't say that or want to write that? And what maybe some tips and tricks would you give to recent graduates of what to do and maybe not to do on a resume or an in-person interview? Absolutely. Oh, I love this. So this I, I enjoy um, because I do want to help, you know, students that are coming right out of college if they want to be in the sports field because, you know, there wasn't a, a ton of people that were there to help me. I mean, I had my connections, but I want to be that person. Like, I, I'm so glad that you say that, that I, that I helped you because that's the greatest reward for me. Um, but so some tidbits that I think I've kind of learned from hiring process you know, especially for students who are just graduating, your resume should be one page and one page alone. Um, I don't even have a resume that's longer than one page. My boss doesn't have a resume that's longer than one page and he's worked in the industry for 15 to 20 years. Um, it needs to be concise, especially when you're applying, whether for an internship or a job, 
you're among hundreds of applicants. And the person going through those resumes does not want to sit and go through two to three pages of experience um, that you have. Now, and make sure the experience that you're putting on your resume is for the job that you're applying for. Um, you know, that's great that you were a bartender and that was great that you were a server or you worked at a golf club and you handed out the carts. That's awesome. That shows me that you have initiative to have a job, but that's not specific experience that I want to see for my marketing job. So, you know, make sure what you have on your resume is geared toward what the position is. Um, also, I think if I would give anybody a piece of advice um, for some experience they should try to get. Um, any type of graphics experience. So even if you take a course in college or you do an online teach yourself tutorial, um, every single time I interview an intern, a full-time staff member, even a game day intern, uh, even a capstone that's doing it for a full-time internship to get credit to graduate. One of my initial questions is, do you have graphics experience? Because we're always looking for that. Even if it's basic, to be able to open up a Photoshop, open up Photoshop, create a document, you know, obviously, you know, we're not looking for somebody to be able to do motion graphics or do video production, but if you can create a billboard for me or a flyer or a, or a print ad or whatever it is, a social media graphic, then that is another asset, another piece of experience that puts you above other people. So that graphics piece is really important. Um, so that's resume stuff. I would say for an interview, um, you know, typically like your introductory interviews or your second round interviews, try to stay right to the point, to the answer of, you're answering the question that the person is asking. You don't need to go off on any kind of tangents. If you're gonna give an example of an ex like experience or a specific thing that you've done, keep it short and sweet, get to the point. Um, another tidbit that's, this is just, maybe it's just me, like if it's a phone interview, like answer the phone with your name. Like don't answer the phone like, hello? like. Like you're not expecting me to call you. Hi, this is Jen. So I know that I called the right person. Um, so those are just some little tidbits that even as, as one of my staff and I do interviews, we all kind of put a little note if, if that's, if you answer the phone with your name. Um, other things for interviews, which I'm sure everybody has said, you know, always have questions prepared. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be 10 questions. It should be two questions. Um, you know, two or three questions at the most, but have them prepared so you, you know that you, you're ready for it. Learn a little bit about the institution that you're interviewing for as well, whether it's a professional team or a college, you know, um, you know, know their website. You know, I don't know how many times people have said um, University of Syracuse. We're Syracuse University. We're not University of Syracuse. Um, so just, you know, have that, you know, kind of information with you and just that knowledge helps, but, and also just be calm, you know, be confident in yourself and um, that helps. It comes across even in a phone interview if you're, if you're calm and confident. So hopefully that helps. Those are just some of the, some of the things that I, that I try to impart on my interns when they're going on interviews. So. No, absolutely. And I feel like we could do another whole segment on interns oh. and internships and maybe that could be a spark and idea and I'll have you come back. Sure. Happy to. <laughs> yeah, because I know I've had experiences already, and just to converse would be quite entertaining, I think, between the both of us. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Oh, God. All the resumes I've seen, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess kind of going back to a little bit of your journey part, obviously, you know, there's struggles along the way, but so how have you overcome them and since entering the athletics field, and what did you do to overcome them? Yeah, I mean, I think working in athletics, there's always going to be challenges. You know, the that everybody says it's long hours, nights, weekends, holidays. Um, you get used to that. Um, I think the biggest challenges that I faced, again, with just the changing landscape at Syracuse with the different, you know, ADs that have come through and kind of the different philosophies that they've had. Um, and adopting those and kind of adapting to that um, sometimes can be tough. Um, you know, the, depending on what kind of boss you have and how you deal with, you know, a different personality. I think that that is something that I've really learned along the way and overcome is that, um, 
you know, not everybody is going to be your best friend and that's okay. That's okay. As long as you work with them and you're professional and you're respectful, I think that that's the most important thing. So I, I pride myself on hoping that I have a good reputation um, within even bosses that have gone, come and gone um, that, you know, we might not have been the best of friends, but we worked together to accomplish a goal. So I think that that for me has probably been my biggest outcome. And, you know, actually my current boss and I, we started off a little rocky and now um, we work very well together. And uh, to be honest, probably the boss that I worked the best with in all of my years at Syracuse. So, and I don't know if I would have ever said that when he first started, because again, a different philosophy comes in and, you know, and it just takes a little bit of time for him to understand, for him to understand kind of the, the landscape of Syracuse and our, us as a staff, and then for us to understand what his goals were. Um, and once we got to that point, um, you know, we really, uh, we've done great things. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud of where we're at as a, as a staff. Again, you know, another, you know, if you want to say a, a struggle or a challenge that we've had is, is just staffing in general of keeping people on staff and making sure we have enough staff. Obviously, you know, universities don't look and say, okay, we need 20 marketing members, 20 marketing staff members. Um, when I first started, there was two. Now we have six, including, my, including myself and my boss, and plus we have four full-time interns every semester, plus 50 plus game day interns. So, you know, to be able to build that staff up and overcome that, um, I think has been one of our biggest accomplishments as well. So, yeah, there's always going to be challenges. And as the landscape is changing, technology, and even in the current times, we have no idea where we're going to be, you know, even in the next week or two. Um, so being able to work together as a team and collaborate, I think, is, is a big thing for us. And we've gotten to that point with a really great staff, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of that. Well, that's awesome. And so I guess that leads into the next question. So what has been your greatest work accomplishment, whether that's at Syracuse or maybe one of your internships that you did prior? Um, I would say my greatest accomplishment is definitely being named the director of marketing last summer. That was probably my proudest moment. Um, you know, just because I felt like it was it was a nice recognition and 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 uh, congratulations from my the group of people that I've worked with to say like, hey, this is long overdue. You deserve this. You've been doing such a great job taking on a leadership role without having a leadership title or a leadership salary. Um, so that was really, um, that's probably my greatest accomplishment. Um, yeah, in, in my career so far, so. So is there a piece of advice that maybe one of your mentors or internship bosses or even where you're at now, uh, gave you a piece of advice that stuck with you? And if so, what is it? Yeah, I mean, the advice was always to meet as many people as you could, network. That was when I was looking for a job or trying to find a job. Um, and I think, again, if that's the one piece of advice anybody takes from me, it's, you know, get, to, get as much experience as you can, whether you learn to, you can learn from it that you love it or you don't, that's okay. Um, and meet as many people as you can. I mean, Jen, you're a perfect example of staying in contact with someone that you met in an internship years ago. I mean, we email, you know, monthly and we catch up and we, we converse about different things in the industry and personal stuff. And I mean, that's, that's a perfect example of what an intern should do. And in your professional career is keeping those contacts with those, that, those people that you've networked with. Um, and then the piece of advice, and this is funny because it really has nothing to do with, with sports. The piece of advice that I got when I first started at Syracuse was in the bathroom one of like the first week. And um, there was a lady in the bathroom and she works in our insurance department. And she's so nice, I had met her a couple of times and she was like, I'm gonna give you one piece of advice. If you, when you leave here at five o'clock, try your hardest to leave your work behind because you have to have that work-life balance. And sometimes in sports, it's hard to find a work-life balance because you know, you're working nights, you're working weekends, late hours, you're getting emails at all hours of the night, and it's really important to try to find that balance. So that's something that I've always um, you know, remembered, and especially now 
when I got married and now that I'm going to have, I have a daughter and I'm going to have a son soon. Like it's very important to me that I work really hard that at five o'clock I, you know, try to turn off my emails and unless it's a complete emergency and it can't wait till the morning, um, that I do that so that I have that family time and, you know, you have a little bit of that work-life balance. No, absolutely. And I can attest it's super hard, especially when social media is going off, at least on my phone. And mm -hmm. it's a daily challenge, I think, to learn when to shut off your brain. Yeah. And there are days that I fail miserably at it. And I come home and I complain to my husband for three hours about, you know, something that happened. And then I apologize and say, I'm sorry, let's talk about something else. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm very lucky. I have a husband who enjoys sports as well. So, you know, if I need to go to a game at night, he'll come with me with, you know, we'll hopefully bring the kids with us. And, um, so I'm lucky with that, that I have, you know, the support of my family, but it, it's really good to try, um, to make that effort to try, I think is really important. So, well, one of the last questions that I have for you is obviously there has been some amazing, amazing games in the Carrier Dome since you have arrived at Syracuse. <laughs> is there one specifically that sticks out to you as maybe your favorite? Oh, it's so hard to pick just one. Um, I feel like each sport to me has one really big moment. Um, it's just, it's so hard because there's so many, you know, moments that I've, I've been a part of, but I have to say, you know, the basketball moments where we've broken, you know, attendance records and, you know, like when we had Duke and John Gillen made the shot to win the game, like that was incredible. Um, when we beat Clemson in football and we stormed the field, that was incredible. Um, you know, on the lacrosse side, when we played Virginia one versus two on a Friday night, we had like 20,000 people in the dome for a lacrosse game, which is insane and unheard of. And we won. Um, so there's so many good moments. And I think that is the single thing that makes me love my job more than anything that, and I do this sometimes when we're at basketball games because it's so loud and there's so many people. And I take like one second, like when the game is about to start and I look around and I think all of these people are here for one reason to watch this game. They're not thinking about anything else in their life, any problems that they have, any bills they have to pay, that the weather sucks because it's snowing and it's January. They're all in here and we're entertaining them. And they're all here to watch our team to win. And they're all cheering for the one purpose. And especially in the time that it is right now, that's why I feel like sports is so important that it's gonna help us through whatever time is gonna come. You know, cause you, it helps you forget for a while and it gives you that, the feeling that nothing else can. So that's, you know, being able to be in the dome and, and stand there and look at that is, it's hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. And, you know, new staff members that come in, I, I tell them this and they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then they get there and they're like, this is unbelievable. And it really is. It's, 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 it's a, it's a great, it's a great feeling. It's emotional. It's, and that's what sports is. You, you, you build that emotion with the fan. And as someone who works in it, you also get that emotion. So I think that's, that's one of the single reasons I, I love my job. Well, that is awesome. And Jen, thank you so much. You shared a lot of great knowledge and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you for joining me. Oh, uh, absolutely. This was awesome. Thank you so much. I, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for including me. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't do this without series without having Jen on. I mean, us Jen's got to stick together. <laughs> That's right. Hey, the Jen's got to stay together. <laughs> That's right. So thank you, thank you. Jen. This is awesome. Great job. Well, thank you. So everyone, thank you. Jen, thanks again for being on. I'm signing off. I'm Jen Maurer. And oh, before you go, make sure you check the links or below to see Syracuse say all up to date on the social media site to Twitter and Instagram, and even maybe give Jen a follow too to see what's up in her life as well. So again, until next time, have a great day, everyone.